Now, if you don't want this messy sludge to build up inside your rainwater harvesting tank, then you are definitely going to want to install one of these systems. And it is actually pretty easy to do. So this system right here is gonna help you catch nice clean rainwater. And best of all, in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to make one of them and install it step by step. So do we DIY? or do we buy? I'm also gonna share with you guys a little tip that I found to make these systems work just a little bit better. So does the system actually work to keep our captured rainwater nice and clean? Well, let's have a look at a real life example. So here's an example of a first flush that I emptied and cleaned a few days ago. Now, apologies for the poor quality video. I had the exposure set completely wrong, but if you look closely, you can still see what's happening. And I thought the water had been completely drained before removing the cap. Well, I guess this time I was a little bit wrong. And most of the dirt ended up washing all over over the floor. Nevertheless, this is what the diverter had stopped from going into the tank. Here's another example of quite a dirty mess. Here's a third example. And here's one last example of me cleaning out another first flush system. So when it rains, water is gonna flow off of our roof and into our gutter system, out of the downpipe, and then into our rain head or our leaf catcher. This little device here is gonna catch all of the big debris like sticks and twigs and leaves and that type of thing, and then it is gonna flow further down the system. So after our rain head, the water flows down into our first flush chamber. And this is where all the dirty and the dusty water is captured and held. And Inside these chambers is normally a ball and eventually as it rains this chamber fills up and the ball then floats to the top, it blocks off and then our clean water is diverted down our transfer pipe and then into our water storage tank. So what is the preferred arrangement for all of these components? Well actually the most important thing in my opinion is to have a leaf catcher or a leaf eater, a rain head, whatever you want to call it. Now I prefer to use the, I think it's the Blue Mountain Co leaf eater um, rain heads or leaf catchers. They seem to be very good quality. I've used a lot of them. I've never had problems with them. Um, I'm sure there's lots of others on the market, so I'll see if I can find some links and I'll leave them in the description if you guys are interested in using the, uh, these specific ones, or maybe there's some others that have got some good reviews, so check out those links. But um, it, the main thing is to always have a, a leaf catcher first. After that, or underneath that, you'll have your first flush system and then your transfer pipe into your tank. However, you can't always have this arrangement. It doesn't always fit. Here's an example of where there is barely enough height between the gutter outlet and the top of the tank. And in this case, a first flush system is installed in a T configuration, which is installed in line so that it doesn't need any extra height. And then there is a tank screen or a leaf catcher installed underneath the tank lid. This setup does however need a little more regular cleaning of the first flush chamber. So, so depending on your guys uh, scenario, you may install it in sort of this T configuration where you've got your inlet pipe coming from the right and then the water gets diverted into your diverter down and then once that fills up, it comes out and then gets diverted out to the left. But uh, this is probably gonna be the scenario in most cases where it's this vertical type of arrangement with a, with a line going out there to the left and being transferred to your tank. So whether you guys decide to DIY or buy your system, you're generally going to need all of these parts. Now, of course, if you buy your system, all of these parts will, again, generally come in uh, the kit that you buy, depending on the kit. Or if you go out and buy all the, the parts separately, in the case of a DIY system, you'll get all of these parts generally from the same store. So I've split the components up into two sections. We've got our rain head section or our leaf eater section here, and we've got the first flush diverter on this side. So we need a rain head and it normally comes with a reducing um, fitting and then some pieces of uh, 80 millimeter PVC pipe that's cut off of a length of PVC pipe. I've also got a, just a general socket here, we'll use that later. We've got a T piece, specifically this is 80 millimeters. We've got a reducer from 110 to 80 millimeters. We've got a 110 millimeter end cap, so it's an end cap and uh, this is the section that glues onto the bottom of a 110 millimeter pipe. We've got a 100 millimeter ball, a polystyrene ball. 
We've got 210 millimeter uh, mounting brackets, and then we've got some valving here. So half inch valve, half inch barrel nipple, and uh, this is also a half inch um, uh, sort of barrel nipple, very similar to a barrel nipple. And then we've got some hose connectors, a section of hose, and then we've also got a length of 110 millimeter PVC pipe. This is just a one meter length. Uh, your guys' length may vary. On the bottom, we've got a 110 millimeter end cap, 110 millimeter pipe section here in the center. We've got a reducer from 110 to 80 millimeters. We've got a small piece of 80 millimeter down pipe, and then we've got our 80 millimeter T. Now this can either be um, mounted like this in a T fashion, or it can uh, be mounted sort of in a vertical fashion. Now under normal circumstances, most people would just go ahead and glue all of these fittings together and go and install it outside on the wall. However, usually this polystyrene ball gets stuck here at the top uh, where the pipe reduces from 110 to 80 millimeters. And there's a small modification that you've got to make to the inside of our 110 millimeter pipe here. And that's what I'm gonna show you right now. At the end of our pipe, there's a very sharp edge here where the pipe has been cut. Now, this sharp edge, if we uh, glue our reducer on, we push it all the way on there. If you have a look inside, just inside there, it's quite difficult to see, uh, but that sharp edge is exposed. And what happens is this ball gets pressed up and it actually hooks on the sharp edge. So all that we need to do before we glue our reducer on is to file away this sharp edge over half of the pipe and uh, then the ball doesn't get stuck anymore. So I've just got a round file here, and as I said, I'm gonna file it away. There we go, that's about halfway. So you basically wanna end up filing a knife edge around half of our pipe. And by doing this, you've removed the edge and the ball doesn't get stuck anymore. Now, the, or the reducers that we are using are offset reducers. So they've got a flat side and they've got an offset side. And what we need to do is to align our knife edge or our filed edge over here with a flat side um, of our reducer. So I've marked halfway. Um, through the through the filed edge and I've also marked basically on our on our flat side here I've marked the center over there and the center over there. So when we glue this whole lot together We'll align the center over there with the center over here and uh, we'll glue this whole lot together Now the importance of this and you should be able to see this inside here You see that edge that we filed away there. There's no more sharp edge for the the polystyrene ball to catch on if we glued it on the wrong way so we, we did the filing, but we glued everything on, let's say upside down, and we pushed it on. You can see inside there, there is still a sharp edge. And uh, if we do it this way, then the polystyrene ball is still gonna catch. Another quick tip when it comes to gluing on the end cap is, well, just firstly to remove the end cap, and we are going to apply some glue on the inner edge here, but just be careful, don't get any glue on the threads or on the bottom edge. Um, if you do, then the end cap might not screw on properly, and you'll end up wasting this, having to cut it off and put on a new one. Now, while I'm putting on the glue here, I'm not putting on excessive amounts of glue, I'm just sort of carefully um, painting on a little bit, not letting it drip around. As I said, we don't really want to get it on the threads. Um, so we, we need to apply enough so that it seals, but we don't want to apply too much so that it, it runs down. There we go. That should be, that should be good. So we'll take this, make sure our pipe is clean. We'll pop that on the bottom. We'll press it on flash, flush, and then we'll give it a slight turn. And what you do need to do is you need to hold this on here for probably 30 to 40 seconds. Um, if you don't, if you just push it on and then walk away, it'll end up um, that this bottom fitting uh, like kind of pushes itself off. And generally this is what you'll always do when you're gluing PVC joints together. Um, you'll push them in, push them together and hold them for a couple of seconds. And now we'll let this dry properly. We'll let it dry overnight before we uh, before we install it and fill it with water, although we will carry on with the assembly. So now we need to fit a valve onto the bottom of our end cap. Now the way we're going to do this, there's multiple ways you can do this. Um, we are going to use a tank adapter. So this is a three quarter inch tank adapter. So I'll just show you what that is quickly. Um, you basically purchase this whole thing as a unit and uh, it comes with two rubber washers. Let me pop them off. Two rubber washers and a nut. 
and then the part that we're going to use is this part. It's the threaded part and it's got a flange on the top and you can see how long that is. Now we're going to put a half inch valve on so I've got this was a half inch tank adapter. I cut it short uh, but I'm just showing you the, the larger one to see, you know, so, so you can see what it looks like when it's new. Now, if you can't get these, these tank adapter things, you can always get a blanking uh, sort of fitting. So half inch uh, valve, ball valve, half inch blanking cap, and you just drill a hole through the center here. You drill it out through the center. <laughs> Before we just slip our modified tank adapter through the cap, and uh, screw on our valve. What I like to do to, to ensure that it seals is I like to put just a little bit of glue around here before we screw it all tight. And that way it is definitely gonna uh, provide a good seal. Just like that, um, small amount, whoopsie. And then we can pop that in there like so. And then we can screw our valve onto the bottom. Now, of course you wanna do this fairly quickly. You don't wanna take your time so that the glue <laughs> ends up drying and uh, nothing's, uh, nothing's gonna stick, but there we go. Just, just hand tight is good enough. I mean, it doesn't have to be super, super tight. And there we can see that's our, um, that's our cap with a valve that's been fitted. So of course, again, we'll let this dry for a couple of hours before we actually install all of this and, and let it fill up with water. Now, also what I like to do over here is I like to take a barrel nipple so just like that, half inch barrel nipple, and uh, we'll screw that. We can just hand tight in here, just like that. And then we can take a hose adapter, we screw that. I think this is 15 millimeter uh, hose adapter, and we screw that onto there, just like that. That's all hand tight, it's not gonna leak. And then we can take our uh, other hose adapter, and then that can easily clip onto the bottom and clip off. So while we're in the garage here, I'm just gonna fit a short piece of hose pipe onto um, our hose fitting here. Now your piece of hose pipe may vary in length depending on uh, where your first flush system is installed, but we'll talk about that outside. Um, I know I've already measured ours, so there goes the ball. <laughs> um, I've already measured this one, so I know how long the piece of uh, hose pipe needs to be. We'll just pop that piece of hose onto the end of the hose connector tighten that up. We don't have to over tighten it. There's no pressure in this line. Now you need to go ahead and cut yourself three of these sections. This is just a piece of 80 millimeter downpipe, 80 millimeters long, and it's 80 millimeters long because the joints we need to join uh, is 40 millimeters here and 50 millimeters there, so that makes 90 millimeters, and I just cut it 10 millimeters shorter so that they don't bottom out. Um, this was just out of a bit of spare downpipe that I had. And we need three of them because there are three joints that we need to make. We're not gonna glue this uh, in the garage. We're gonna install it on the wall first and then we're gonna glue it. So let's go and have a look. So when we were in the garage, I said, don't go ahead and glue this T-piece onto the, the larger pipe until it's installed on the wall. Now, the reason for that is, you can see here that our transfer pipe it kind of transfers off at an angle. And I'm not sure if you can see the angle over there to the wall. So if we were to glue our, um, our T-piece uh, kind of flush with our diverter, the pipe wouldn't have lined up with our tank. Um, so what we end up doing is we install this piece, um, our pipe onto the wall first, and then we push everything together um, just loosely. We mark it, we, we clock it correctly so that the transfer pipe is pointing in the correct direction. Of course, we mark it, we pull it all apart again, and then we glue it. Um, I hope that makes sense. So I start off by installing the pipe brackets onto the wall and loosely clamping the first flush diverter in place. Now these pipe brackets are lined up with the outlet of the gutter. It's kind of out of frame uh, above where I'm working, and you will see this a little bit later. Then I'll check the alignment of the T-piece, make sure it's pointing in the correct direction, and then go ahead and mark it with a pencil. Now I'll go ahead and glue the T-piece to the top of the pipe using those short joiner pieces that we saw at the beginning of the video. Once that's done, I'll make some fine adjustments before finally tightening the pipe clamp screws. Now I'll go ahead and test fit the rain head on top of the diverter to see if it's all at the correct height. And if you watch closely, you'll notice that I need to raise the entire diverter just a couple of inches. Then I'll test the rain head once again and then mark where the holes need to be drilled uh, that fasten the rain head to the wall. 
Now, unfortunately, the wind shifted the camera, so you can't quite see what I'm doing, but all I did was drill the holes in the wall, and there's two of them. Now I can go ahead and reinstall the original eaves offset downpipe to the gutter outlet and then make sure that it's securely mounted. Now this was the original rainwater downpipe that used to carry the water away. All I did was I cut it a bit shorter so that it now feeds water into the top of the rain head. So once that's secured, I'll pop the rain head into place, uh, screw it up, and then this section should be good to go. Something to note here though, I do prefer not to glue the rain head onto the top of the pipe stack because if we need to make repairs or changes or do some maintenance in the years to come, it's pretty easy to remove everything and then to reuse it without damaging anything. But remember, everything below the T-piece, uh, I prefer to glue that because it all needs to be watertight. So when installing the rain head and cutting the down pipe, you'll want to leave just enough space between the outlet of the pipe and the screen so that the leaf screen can be easily removed and cleaned. Now if you make this gap too big or too far apart, um, there will be more chance of water splashing or spilling over the sides as the rain trickles down. And this is especially prevalent um, when this builds up with leaves. The last step is to install the feeder pipe from the outlet of the diverter and into the top of our rainwater tank. So these systems do require a little bit of maintenance. They do need to be regularly cleaned or else the trapped water inside our chamber can turn a bit rank. You basically want to drain this pipe after each rain. So a lot of the systems that you buy, they, they've got either a valve on the bottom that you will crack open slightly so that um, our chamber has got a slow leak off rate. We'll have a look at that shortly. And the other systems have actually got um, a valve on the bottom. It's kind of like a rubber washer with a very small hole in the middle. So you put that on and then the water just runs out of that hole. So now that our chamber is actually full of water or if it is raining when you are setting this valve, all that you need to do is crack the valve open just a small amount. I'll try and do that. Just like that. And we can see we've got a slow leak off rate here. And this is roughly what we are looking for. Now, depending on the size valve you are using, uh, the amount that it is opened will vary. You'll just have to kind of do this by trial and error. But as long as there's a little bit of water flowing out, the system will slowly leak out after the rain. The pipe will empty itself and that'll reduce the amount of maintenance that it requires. So now that we've got our leak off rate set here, we can leave the valve in this position. Um, and then the water will leak out kind of onto the ground where the original downpipe would have flowed. However, if you've got a garden nearby or you don't want the water slowly trickling out uh, all over your paving, uh, you can grab yourself a piece of hose pipe and you can put a hose connector on the bottom of the valve. And then we just clip it on there like that and we lead our valve or we lead our pipe, should I say, into whatever flower bed that we want. And the reason we've got a quick connect here on the bottom is because every now and again we need to open this cap and we need to take off the bit of pipe on the bottom. So all that we do is we disconnect it and then we are able to unscrew the cap and clean inside the chamber. So how big should these systems be? Well, simply put, the bigger the better. Now, this all comes down to how much pollution is around your catchment area, as in your roof, and the intensity and the frequency of your rainfall. So that said, most of the systems that I've seen are way too small. Even the ones seen in this video are probably a little bit on the small side, but in general terms, it's what could fit at each location. So that's what we have. Now, of course, for best results, you guys are gonna have to experiment with your exact setup to get it working effectively. And Please remember, while these systems don't prevent 100% of the dirt and nasties getting into your tank, they do go a long way to keeping your harvested water nice and clean. There's also a whole lot of other rainwater harvesting related videos on the channel explaining all of the parts of the system. Some of the videos are quite long, they are full of details, so please feel free to skip around as and when you will. If you guys enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, uh, leave us a comment, let us know what you think. Thanks for watching, and you'll see me in the next video. Cheers.